Hello everyone, my name is Cameron and welcome back to the channel. It was weird. <laughs> we are here for the Backlash 2018 review. I know, I'm sorry, it's late. Uh, for those of you who don't know what happened, so Sunday was my first day of training, so I was gone out of my house from 2 to 9. I got home, went immediately to sleep for three hours. My uncle woke me up when he got here around midnight because he had work until midnight, and I was like, all right, we'll watch it together. And we watched the first match, which I didn't really do a lot of writing on, and honestly, I didn't rate because I didn't watch most of the match, uh, which is the pre-show match, Ruby Riot vs. Bailey. Um, let's get that one out of the way real quick. Uh, Ruby, Ruby Riot won that. I'm one to know on predictions from the start, so, we'll, so that way we can get into the stuff that I actually watched more in depth. Um, I fell asleep. I sporadically was awake and falling back asleep throughout the entire show. I saw a bit of the United States, a bit of the Intercontinental. Um, I think those are the only two matches I really actually woke up for. Um, but I just couldn't watch it Sunday. I was way too tired. So then I watched it yesterday. And by the time I finished it, I was so tired. I was like, all right, I'm going to bed. I'll do the review tomorrow. So finally, we're doing the review. I'm sorry it's taken me two days longer than it normally does to get this all out to you, to you guys. But I've just been really busy and really tired recently. So here we go. All right. So we just covered Ruby Riot versus Bailey. Right on to the Intercontinental Championship match. Seth Rollins, my prediction, versus The Miz. Uh, Miz apparently on the pre-show again, since I didn't watch a lot of the pre-show. Honestly, I barely even remember the match. So, uh, Miz apparently on the pre-show wanted the Miz Taraji back together. Uh, he showed a very aggressive side. Uh, Seth did some chops. And for those of you wondering, do I still have PTSD when I see a chop? Yes. Yes, I do. Seth shot down while going for a springboard knee. Uh, Miz throwing Rollins back in. Uh, mocks him, does the, you know, the kick thing that Rollins does when he's preparing for the schoolboy super kick. Miz in control, knees to Rollins back. Uh, DDT by Miz for a two count. What the hell? My sorry, my my jaw is like in a lot of pain right here. Uh, Seth taking control, sling blade. Miz sent out. Suicide dive by Rollins. Springboard knee missed. Skull crusher finale reverse two count. Blockbuster for a two count. Uh, figure four avoided. Springboard clothesline. Miz slips under Seth and outside. Um, sends Rollins face first into the apron. Miz gets caught and slammed down. Frog splash two count. Uh, curb stomp set up, but Miz rolls out. Uh, they go back in. Miz gets sent out again. Rollins caught with a punch uh, while going for the suicide dive. Uh, DDT avoided on the apron. Back and forth on the apron. Rollins goes for a revolution knee, but Miz sidesteps, and Rollins goes knee first right into the post. It looked really bad, <clears throat> especially since, you know, Rollins has knee injuries in the past. Also, I'm wearing my Assassin's Creed necklace again. It's probably the only necklace I, I wear for the next, like, month. Um... I love it. It's fantastic. Uh, figure four locked in. Miz keeps him from the rope. Honestly, it was locked in for a long time. Rollins fights out of it and reverses it. That's the issue with the figure four is it can be easily reversed and all the damage is going to you. Um, Miz reverses it back. Rollins gets the rope though. Miz goes for the uh, figure four again, but Rollins counters. Some nice back and forth strikes. Rollins taking control, but Miz hits... Uh, hits his knee. Skullcrusher finale avoided in Seguri. Uh, Skullcrusher finale hit by the Miz for a two count. Miz went for it again, but a roll up uh, was attempted by Seth, and he went to do another move, but his knee gave out. Rollins attacks Miz up top. Superplex blocked by Miz. Attacks the knee again. Uh, Superplex Falcon Arrow gets set up, but the knee gave out once more. Skullcrusher finale for a two count. Skullcrushy fin skull crushing finale from the second rope setup, but Rollins fights it off. Goes for a second rope curb stomp, but Miz avoids it. Roll up, reversed um, curb stomp by Rollins. Rollins wins 2-0 on predictions, 20 out of 10 for the match. It was fantastic. I feel like story-wise, it was done perfectly with the whole, uh, you know, it was them fighting the leg pain off for the entire match. It was really well done. Both men did fantastic in this match. I think the right person won in Seth. I think he was the one who deserved to get this win. Um... I think Miz also had a really strong showing, though, and it's probably going to set up for him to maybe go to the Money in the Bank or even the United States Championship, either one of which I'm honestly fine with because Miz is a fantastic wrestler. I just don't want him tying Jericho's record. Just, just saying. Next, Raw Women's Championship match. Nia Jax, the champion, my prediction, versus the challenger, Alexa Bliss. 
Um, Naya has like blondish hair now. I, I don't know when she did that. I don't know if she had it last week on Raw. I don't think she did. I think she did it before uh, Sunday. Uh, Bliss going after the knee, trying to get in some uh, quick sleepers. Uh, but she just, honestly, it, it's a huge size thing. Also, she's she's really trying to hammer home the bullies never win Naya thing. And Oh, God. I hate it. Alexa going after the knee again, or some big splashes by Nia, tossing Alexa around the ring. Alexa going after the knee again, uh, trying her best to keep Nia out off of her feet, you know, because obviously she's a bigger person. She wants to, you know. Uh, Alexa slams Nia face first on the apron, starts slapping her. DDT reversed. Uh, Bliss avoids the Samoan drop. Uh, rolling senton avoided. Uh, Bliss, honestly, lasted in control a lot longer than I thought she was going to. Jax goes to set for a second row of Samoan drop. But Bliss fights into uh, fights it into a sleeper. Uh, Naya fighting out of a few more. Uh, Bliss thrown across the ring. Also at uh, at some point during this match, she suffers she suffers a shoulder injury. I don't know when it happened, but apparently reported afterwards. Uh, afterwards, she did suffer a sh a minor shoulder injury. No telling when she, how long she's gonna be out. The fact that she hasn't been able to wrestle recently because of her breast augmentation surgery and now this. Um, kind of sucks for for Alexa but I think no matter what whether it's storyline or not storyline I think it's a good time to kind of you know push her off for a bit uh throwing Bliss across the ring repeatedly uh Bliss sends Naya over the top rope down to the floor um outside she hit her hip on the apron almost hit her face and head off of the steel steps Bliss DDT's Nia onto the steps. Uh, honestly, no clue how she's going to get her back into the ring. Uh, five count. Alexa goes in. The ref, for some reason, restarts the count as Alexa goes in, not when she goes back out. No idea why. Uh, Nia starts getting up. Alexa begged the ref to stop the count because she can't get her in. Um, they both go back in. Two count on Jax. Uh, Tampa tantrum by Alexa. Uh, hard hits on Nia. Second rope. Someone drop avoided. Leg taken out for a two count. Um, Alexa kicks Jax. Face first to the turnbuckle. Uh, Twisted Bliss gets caught by Nia. Small drop, three count. Nia wins. Three non predictions, 10 out of 10. Um, thought it was a really good match. The storyline behind this was actually really well done, surprisingly, for for a women's belt. Because a lot of time it seems like their, their women's feuds are half-assed, and I really hate that. But no, this one was done really well. Um, then Nia cut, uh, gave a very nice inspirational speech about accepting yourself and not changing for everyone for anyone. And then she said, "Be a star," and I was like, "God damn it!" They couldn't, they couldn't just, they couldn't just have her give the inspirational speech. Like, hey, hey, throw the "Be a star" line in there. Like, <sighs> yeah. Next, United States Championship match: Jeff Hardy, the champion, my prediction, versus Randy Orton. Uh, pretty fast-paced match so far, honestly. Hardy taking it to Orton, uh, diving off the apron into him, doing a lot of the flippy, -de flippy -de do shit he does. Uh, drop kick by Orton, Hardy sent onto the post. Uh, Tree of Woe stomps in the corner. Uh, Hardy attacks Orton off the steps, attacking Orton outside. Slams him off the steps. Hardy going for a springboard, but Orton catches him with a drop kick. Slams Hardy down on the barricade, uh, spine first three times in a row, and he kind of is his back is in pain for the rest of the match. Stomps by Orton, drops him on the top rope. Orton slowing it down with a very, very long headlock. While this happens, fans start chanting Rusev Day. He does a lot of head, uh, rest hold, like headlock type things. It's boring. Tom would drop by Hardy. Uh, Hardy control, whisper in the wind. Two count, twist of fate reversed, RKO reversed. Power slam by Orton for a two count. Uh, draping DDT gets avoided. Cardiac arrest uh, kick gets avoided by Orton. If you guys don't know what the cardiac arrest is, it's when Hardy has a person in the corner in a seated position in the turnbuckle area. And he goes up, hops up on the rope, and then does the double boot stomp and then kind of rolls out of it sure that was a bad example of it uh, of trying to explain it but you guys probably know what i mean draping ddt rko gets set up uh he does you know the 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 that one roll up by hardy twist the fate swans on bomb three count hardy wins four no predictions 15 out of 10 really good match really good showing by hardy um there's not much to say on this one honestly it was just a really fantastic match um, it shows the, the the type of person Hardy is and why him and both him and Orton deserve to be in the Hall of Fame someday. Uh, there was a lot of weirdness on commentary where they're saying second generation superstar. For those of you who don't know, Randy Orton is a third generation superstar. Uh, his grandfather 
was a wrestler, so was his father, and then now him. I'm sure his kids will probably be wrestlers at some point as well. Uh, Elias comes out, does his typical hate on the city, insert city name here thing. Uh, fans don't shut up, so he threatens to leave. Doesn't act like he's going to stay slash leave, kind of going back and forth. He goes to stay, they boo, he goes to leave, they cheer. Uh, New Day come out. They uh, For those of you who don't know, they may break up soon, and the reason being is their merch sales are apparently plummeting. They're not as popular as they used to be, so either... I'm guessing one of two things is going to happen. Either one, they're going to break them up, probably have Kofi go maybe United States, why Biggie uh, probably goes to Raw along with Xavier Woods, and Xavier Woods could potentially go to Cruiserweight division if he can make it to that point again. I'm assuming Biggie would probably go mostly Intercontinental Championship spot. Uh, Biggie has a bass drum, Kofi has cymbals, along with Woods having his uh, trusty trombone fighting his chest. Uh, asked if he wanted to jam out with them. Uh, he actually said Elias is pretty good too. Uh, Woods say they want to, they don't want to play with Elias. They want to walk with Elias. Uh, Kofi goes on a bit for, um, a bit too long with the cymbals. Like they were doing the New Day Rocks thing with the drum, the cymbals, and the trombone. And Kofi just kind of went on way too long. Uh, Jojo reintroduces Elias, uh, but he's interrupted by it in English. Uh, holds the Rusev day incredibly long. Rusev comes out. God, this segment was so fucking long. I'm not even kidding. Reintroduced again. No way, Jose Tice Worldwide and the Fashion Police interrupt. Reintroduced yet again. And then Bobby Roode hits him with the Glorious DDT. And then the conga line for No Way Jose recontinues. It was really crap. I don't know. Uh, men's singles match. Danny Bryan versus Big Cass. I have predicted Danny Bryan. Really quick, I want to just make a point that Cass did his taunt, his little thing, way too much. I was like, dude... You're trying to look big and scary, and you're going... Like, his taunt is so fucking stupid looking. I hate it. Daniel Nation kicks on Cass. Uh, Cass has bad leg. Fans are chanting, we want Enzo. I think that's what we all know WWE actually stands for. God, why were they chanting, we want Enzo? Daniel taking it to him. Uh, I love this fucking goat face. Yes kicks, slam down after uh, Cass versus the final one. Big chop to Daniel's chest. Cass, being very aggressive, uh, keeps doing a stupid taunt. Yes kicks in the corner, drop kicks, caught on the last, and then thrown in the air. Uh, Cass, is, Cass is now in control, keeps doing a stupid fist raise, head bobbing taunt like I mentioned. Yes lock in, Cass taps, Daniel wins, 5-0 and on predictions, 10 out of 10. Uh, Cass attacks him after, throws him around the ring ringside. Uh, fans start chanting, you tapped out. Throws him in the ring, hits him with a big boot. Uh, does his taunt, fans start chanting, Casshole. Um, really quick, I want to say, and I say this every time I watch Daniel Bryan wrestle nowadays, it's 2018, and I'm seeing a person who is one of my favorite wrestlers who I never thought was going to wrestle again, wrestle in a WWE ring, and it is insane to me to get to see Daniel Bryan wrestle again. I love it. Match number six, SmackDown Live Women's Championship match, Charlotte versus the champion Carmella. I predicted Charlotte. Never forget, because they, because WWE wants you to forget, never forget that the original Women's Money in the Bank ladder match, the first ever, the inaugural, the history-making, first-time, typical mumbo-jumbo they do with, with this kind of stuff, was won by a man. Because they try to say that Carmella won it on her own. No. We all know what really happened. A man climbed that ladder, grabbed the briefcase down, sorry, I had a hair on my phone, and threw it to her. So then, WWE realizing how stupid their fucking finish was because of all the backlash from the fans, heh, <laughs> backlash, decided, okay, let's give them another one. And now they're trying to act like that was the, like she won that on her own and that was hers. No, because James Ellsworth still tried to get involved in that match, okay? So shut it. We all know what actually happened. We all know that in truth, Carmella got the fucking briefcase because of a chinless wonder. I really hope Becky Lynch wins it this year because Becky Lynch, Cashing in on Carmella. Mwah! Magnifique. All right. Let's get on with this before I fucking make this go too long. Uh, ne uh, honestly, I'm going to love with you. I'm not excited for this match. Carmella just... Here's, here's an excitement for a match I normally have for a women's championship match, especially on SmackDown. And then Carmella gets added in. Just, yeah. 
Uh, she mocks Charlotte with the woos, the strut, yada, yada, yada. Then she eats a massive big boot from Charlotte. Uh, she goes to run away. She goes like, give me my title, and goes to leave. Flair stops her, gets slammed down on the outside. She does her stupid fucking terrible super kick. Charlotte dropping her, Carmella, uh, belongs in Jersey Shore. Not, she's not belonging in a wrestling ring. She belongs on the Jersey fucking Shore, because that's how annoying she is. Definitely doesn't deserve to be women's champion. Chops to her. Uh, Charlotte does a strut. Gets very aggressive. I honestly now understand why Saudi officials were so uh, upset about seeing her. And I, I'm not trying to say that what they said was right and that what they how they treat women is right. No, what I'm saying is Carmella is an ugly, annoying, terrible performer and... Trust me, me seeing, having to hear her voice and having to see her kind of upset me. And it made me hate this pay-per-view partially. Like, it made me hate this match. It should have been someone way better than Carmella facing Charlotte. It should have been Charlotte versus, like, Becky or Charlotte versus Asuka again. But no. We get to see what we saw in the span of a few, in the span of a few weeks was Charlotte beating Asuka at WrestleMania. She comes out the next Tuesday. And... She gets, not the next Tuesday, she comes out two weeks later, or whatever, and gets cashed in on by Carmella after being beaten down by the Iconics. The future is Iconic. God, I fucking hate their voices too. Ugh. Why do all the heels on SmackDown Live have to have like the most annoying voices ever? So yeah. Um... Shady code of silence locked in. Charlotte fights out. Roll up. Big boot. Moonsault missed. Hurts her leg. Garbage shooter kick to Charlotte's leg. <sighs> Carmella wins. 5-1 on predictions. 1 out of 10. She's horrible. Honestly, I'm hoping Asuka breaks her arm. Or Becky. Or both. Next, the WWE Championship match. AJ Styles, the champion, my prediction, versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura rolls out. Styles follows him out. Sends him into the barricade multiple times. Uh, strong back and forth with um, a slow pace. It was actually a really good match. I really like this one. Uh, backbreaker by AJ. Chop to AJ's throat. Drop kick avoided by Nakamura. AJ hits um, one right after, though. Uh, Nakamura uh, hit... What the fuck did I see? I think I was supposed... Wait, what? I think, hard. I think I was supposed to say hitting and my H just looks like an L because I was so fucking tired by this point. Hitting hard knees to AJ's neck. Uh, Nakamura control going for lots of pinfalls. Um, hard kick by Nakamura. Hard knees to AJ's face. We want tables chance. We didn't get any. Styles set up... Uh, Set to the time. Oh, set into the timekeeper's area. Legs uh, dropped on the barricade. Uh, Dragon sleep by Nakamura. Reverse exploder avoided. Phenomenal forearm caught. Uh, new to the midsection. Kinshasa set up the, the second rope one. Um, landslide. Lots of close falls. Nakamura gets a chain. Uh, oh, chair. God, my fucking writing today. AJ um, avoids it. Nakamura gets caught. In the chair, like he pulls it with his foot. Reverse exploder onto the chair, hitting AJ's legs on it. AJ throws the chair into Nakamura. This is the coolest spot of the night, in my opinion. He throws it at Nakamura as Nakamura is charging at him. And it bounces off. So it hit Nakamura in the face. But Nakamura is running so fast, it bounces off and hits AJ and busts him open. It was... It was awesome. Uh, Nakamura in the calf crusher. AJ wrenching it in hard. Triangle in on Styles. Styles clash avoided. Phenomenal forearm avoided. Forearm to the back of the neck. Pele kick. Low blow to Styles. Low blow to Nakamura. Both men down, holding their junk. Uh, back and forth strikes. Headbutt by Nakamura. They both simultaneously kick each other in the dick. Literally, they both have the same idea and both kick at the same time, hitting the other in the nuts. Uh, double count in. Uh, if you guys don't. Uh, neither man could get to their feet in time. 5 1 1 on predictions. 8 out of 10. Would have preferred a definitive uh, end, but both men are were still in lots of. And both men were still in lots of pain, having to be like helped to the back. Now, I really quick want to make this point for people who are complaining, but this is a no DQ match. How could they do that? Those. Uh, a TKO type situation still exists in no DQ matches. 
The only things that are allowed that aren't allowed or that aren't there in a DQ match are you know you're allowed to do anything. You know the counts, the five counts aren't there when you're in the corner beating on someone. You're allowed to hit with weapons. The count a count out is not there. But when both men are still lying down on the ground, you have to look at their safety, and that's what the ref did. He looked straight at the safety, or more importantly, the safety of their nuts, and that is how it ended. Now I don't think anyone would have wanted it to end this way, but that's just the way it ended. Um, I think it would have been better with a definitive end and maybe have Nakamura go over. I don't know, to be honest, how I feel about this one, but I'm kind of hoping this leads to a huge blow-off match later on, maybe at SummerSlam. I wouldn't really mind that. Uh, SummerSlam, Nakamura versus AJ Styles would be a fantastic match, in my opinion. Um, but seeing them hit each other and nuts repeatedly was kind of funny. Match number eight. Men's tag team match, Strowman and Lashley versus Owens Zane. I predict Strowman Lashley. Uh, Sammy and Bobby starting. Uh, Owens in, Lashley take it to him. Zane in, but he rolls out to get away from Bobby. Lashley sent down off the uh, the top or the rope. Owens tagged in, Zane back in, taking it to Lashley. Uh, Braun ready to fuck Sammy up. Zane sent down face first. Owens in, stop uh, stopping. Lashley again, Strowman in, destroying Owens, Zayn stepping in, barrels through chaos, and Sammy into the barricade. Braun gets sent into the post, Zayn in, Luba kick caught, KO stops him from uh, leaving. They have an argument, Zayn throws Owens to Strowman, Owens throws Zayn in, Zayn slaps him. Uh, they all He gets surrounded by all three of them and then runs away. Braun and Bobby after Owens, suplex after Spinebuster, Lashley, Strowman win, 6 one on one prediction, 6 out of 10. Now here's the weird thing. Pretty positive that Kevin Owens was not the legal man and neither was Bobby Lashley. I don't remember seeing them get tagged in. Um, Zayn runs from Strowman Lashley and Strowman attack Owens. Uh, Braun goes after Sammy, power slam. Honestly, damn. But yeah, I'm pretty sure neither Lashley nor, Z nor Owens were the legal man. Last I knew, Zayn was still legal. Was still the legal participant in that match for them. So I don't know what happened there. It was kind of weird. It was kind of stupid, and the finish kind of sucked, in my opinion. Honestly, this match I don't think the the belonged. It should have just not been there. They should have just had eight matches on the card, or even threw in you know this wonderful thing called tag team championship matches, or this other wonderful thing called the cruiserweight championship match. But no, instead you had Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman face Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in a tag match. Finally, the final match of the night, the men's singles match, Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns. No idea why the fuck this is closing. I guess it's probably because this has a definitive finish, unlike the WWE Championship match. Uh, Joe and Reigns fight before the match. Joe ta uh, attacked him first. Um, Yurinagi through the Spanish announce table, throws Reigns over the uh, normal, the English announce table, and the German announce table. Bell rings. Joe goes in, go or going in on Reigns with heavy hits. Uh, Joe and Control heavy hits with slow pace, just like the Nakamura Styles match. Reigns fights back. Joe still ultimately in control, though. Uh, more heavy hits. Reigns gets sent off the rope. Uh, suicide dive by Joe. Uh, back and forth strikes. Joe sent out of the ring. Reigns hits him with a drive-by. You know, that awesome drop kick he does. Uh, this match is honestly really fucking long. It took a long time. Reigns in control. Atomic drop. Uh, kick. Sent on. Two count. Drive-by caught into the Kokia Clutch. Uh, roll up, Superman punch, two count, spear, Joe gets his leg on the rope, uh, Kokia clutch in, Roman rolls over in an odd pin, like it was really weird looking, uh, roll up, reverse into Kokia clutch, muscle buster avoided, spear, three count, Reigns wins, six, two, and one on predictions, eight out of ten. I don't really know what to say on this, this one, it, it, uh, Reigns should have lost, that's all I'm saying. I like Roman Reigns, I'm never gonna say I don't like Roman Reigns, I do. But he should have lost. This match should have had Samojo winning to set up for uh, Joe to go after the title. Sorry, guys. Give me a minute. I'm texting Jesse. There we go. It should have been Joe winning, getting set up to go for him to be the number one contender or even win the Money in the Bank ladder match. Either way, Joe should have won this match. It would have been a much more positive received ending. For those of you wondering what I mean by that, people in Newark left the arena because of this match going on last. They they saw this match going on last and left. They 
walked out of the arena. Like, you gotta be pretty pissed off with um, the way they're doing it to leave the arena before the show ends. Um, but, you know, whatever. It's the way it is. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the backlash the backlash review. I will see you guys next month for the uh, next month for pay-per-view predictions and review on Money in the Bank. Hopefully, hopefully with me going to the Raw after Money in the Bank, there is still a possibility of that happening. I really hope I get to go if there's still tickets that is. Um, which would be really cool in my opinion if I get to go. I'd love it. Because going to see a live event would be awesome in my opinion. Um, and basically what I would do, what the review would be, it would be after I got home from Monday Night Raw, I would wait until, well actually I'd probably do it. Um, I'd still probably do the review Monday before I left, but I'd also give you guys a nice little kind of reaction thing of how I, of what happened and how I felt after the show. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you all in the next one. Stay home. Peace.